Bistro fans, so welcome to my backyard. Um, I know hopefully everyone's been having a lovely weekend and I was a little worried earlier we we're gonna get some rain, we still have some clouds, but um, wanted to do kind of a quick tour of my backyard and herbs. So a lot of people come in to the store looking for herbs and maybe you've heard the name of one, but you don't know what it looks like. We have quite a few things planted throughout our yard. So just kind of a quick list of kind of the things that we're gonna see here on this video. We have red raspberry, which we're standing right next to. We'll get to that in a minute. Catnip, comfrey, burdock, spearmint, dandelion, echinacea, colt's foot, elecampane, Solomon's seal, yarrow, chives, lavender, feverfew, butterfly weed, lungwort, sage, butterbur, violet, meadowsweet, nettle, angelica, oregano, valerian, motherwort was another one that we saw when we did a quick walk around. Um, I feel like there's a few more that are gonna that are gonna pop up as well as we go along. So. First, we're gonna start here with our, our red raspberry. I guess we're getting a few raindrops as well. Welcome, welcome to Michigan, right? So red raspberry, you can see here, um, we actually use this quite often for um, intestinal health. It's rich in iron and calcium. It's also soothing to the stomach and digestive system, it has antiviral properties. It's good to be applied externally to sores and skin irritations and it can also be used as an eye wash. So as you can see here, lots of good things happening with raspberry. Um, and now we're gonna move over here to comfrey. We have a couple good patches of comfrey. And here is, um, you can see it's an early bloomer, has um, flowers, they come out kind of in whorls, and then they also have little bell-shaped flowers. And the bell shape that happens. So, and you can see here that if you look at the stalk, it's very fuzzy. It has lots of hairs all along it. It also has hairs on the back side of the leaves. So it's really fuzzy and it's a really prolific grower. So as you can see here, this crop that we have, we've actually tried to dig it out four, four or five times now and it keeps coming back. Um, so if anyone's interested in comfrey, I do have a couple, a couple good chunks that we are trying to rehome. So if this is something that's interesting to you or maybe you would like to plant it, leave a comment for us. Um, so the things that we like about comfrey is it's a wound healer, a bone knitter. It has um, good general aid in digestion. However, it should be used with caution when used internally. Um, it promotes healing. It makes a good poultice to mend broken bones and we most often, often know it as homeopathic symphytum. Um, so we're getting a good little rain right now. Um, I think Lewis and I are gonna maybe head towards the front of the yard here and kind of go against our, our plan of where we were going. We'll come back over to the side of the yard and check it out, but let's go under the front, maybe where we have some, some coverage <laughs> until the rain stops. Um, We'll come back along the side here too. We do have quite a bit of herbs planted along the edge. Um, let's go around front and we'll, we'll check out um, the lavender that we have growing. So lavender we most often know and use for essential oils, um, but if you've never seen a lavender plant before, so this is, um, these are our lavenders and actually if you brush through it, you can smell the lavender scent. And you can see here, they're just now starting to open um, so soon we'll have a whole bunch of small purple flowers. And these are the flowers that if you buy it in bulk, this is typically what you'll purchase are the, the blooms. And these a lot of people will even use in, I've taken them and sewn them up into little fabric um, sachets and thrown them in with my dryer uh, when I dry my clothes. And that actually can help scent, naturally scent some of your clothes if you don't wanna use chemicals. And while we have a little bit of, little bit of uh, overhang here, we have a couple other things out front. Um, let's start over here with the fever few. So this is fever few, and we used to have it all throughout our yard, and now not so much. And you can see here the flowers, the blooms are just starting to bloom, um, and they look almost like chamomile flowers. So they're very small, dainty flowers. And this you can actually pick. Um, the leaves and the flowers and make an external flea rinse for your pet. So it has natural permethrene, permethrene um, 
constitutions in it, and that is something that is typically extracted and made into into our what we know as our flea and tick chemical medicine. So this is an all natural, it's actually safe for cats as well. So if you do have fever few growing, you can make a tea or a tincture and um, put it on your pet. And then over here is butterfly weed. It's also called pleurisy. So this is really good for the lungs. And you can see again, some of the stuff still early in bloom, but we have some blooms started. And these, when this flowers is bright orange. Um, so this is actually in the, um, butterfly uh, or the milkweed family so you you can see some of that the similarities butterfly weed a lot of times have a lot of the same similarities just because they're the same family of plants so should we go back to the ed um, edge of the yard since it's done looks like looks like it's done raining so back over here we have um, cornflowers colt's foot elecampanae salamon seal catnip um, actually, I'm going to go back behind, into the backyard again, um, behind the gate, because there's a couple other really cool plants that I don't want you to miss out on. <clears throat> so I really said the beds look good. Good. So over here, you can see is a really fluffy plant. It has um, kind of a white undercoat on it, and then it, it's actually really soft to the touch. And this is marshmallow. And if you've ever come into the store before, we often recommend marshmallow for cats um, or dogs that have an inflamed intestinal system. So this is often used to, has a mucilaginous quality to it, and that means that it can be slippery and that it is um, soothing to the intestinal membranes. So it can be really helpful for helping push hairballs through. It can be really helpful for reducing the inflammation as well throughout the intestinal system. All mucous membranes really can benefit from marshmallow. So we never planted that. It completely showed up here on its own. Sometimes things show up in your yard because you need them. Um, <clears throat> and it gets a really pr pretty purple or light, light pink, purplish uh, flower on it. And it's part of the mallow family. So if you're familiar with honey, uh, hollyhock or mallow, you kind of know what the, the bloom looks like then. Really pretty, gets really tall, um, can be invasive as well. It's kind of taken over. We've pulled it out in different areas. <clears throat> Good old dandelion. So I unfortunately don't have any dandelions in bloom right now, but look at these bad boys. Those are some pretty big dandelion leaves that we have. So dandelions, <clears throat> you can use the entire plant in some way, shape, or form. So you can use the root, you can use the leaves, the stalks or the stems of where the blooms are. There's a milky sap in there and some people use those for warts. Um, just a few weeks back, I actually made dandelion flower cookies for the staff. Um, so you can actually take the flowers and pluck out the petals and put them into your baking. Um, oftentimes I'll come out here and as you can see, it's kind of behind a fence. I will pick the greens from behind the fence area and actually put them on our sandwiches or add them to our salads. Really good at helping the digestive juices, really good at helping bile production. Um, what else do I have on here? <clears throat> oh, another way that I like to use dandelion is I'll pick um, some dandelion leaves and I'll put it into our pesto sauce. So again, you have a lot of greens, obviously a lot of basil is typically used. And most often I will take and use it <clears throat> in my pesto. Mild liver cleanser also cleanses the blood. Um, we do have some spearmint, we'll, but we'll get back. Um, we have quite a bit out back too, so we'll get back around to that. <clears throat> so moving down along the edge here, let's stop Lewis with the Colt's foot. So down through here, you can see we have Colt's foot. This is kind of the, the remaining bloom that was there. So these are really interesting because the bloom comes up First thing in the spring, it kind of comes up around the same time crocuses do, and it'll come up before any of the foliage comes up. So this is actually the foliage, and throughout the summer it'll keep growing and the leaves, the leaves can get a lot bigger. This can be kind of invasive as well, but most often folks will use this for respiratory health. Um, picking, picking the blooms, making a cough syrup out of it. <clears throat> Down a little bit further we do have some echinacea or purple cone flower. 
Um, these are a couple small patches that we have in the yard. We do have others um, behind us here. This is Elecampane, and this gets really tall, probably gets about as tall as I do. Um, and then it has sunflower-like leaves, so or sunflower-type blooms. They're on the smaller side. They're maybe only three inches in diameter, but this is Elecampane. And then moving back over here, we have quite a bit over here in the corner. So back here we have catnip. And catnip is part of the mint family, and you can typically tell something is part of the mint family when you have a square stalk. So it might be hard to tell in the video here, but it actually has kind of a square, a square stem to it. And catnip, although we think of catnip as something that makes our cats um, crazy and wild and rolling around on the floor, um, catnip actually has calming properties to it as well. It's also very good for, it's called a carminative, so it's really good for the stomach. It's really good for settling the stomach, gas, colic, things of that sort. Catnip actually makes a really mild tea. I always encourage people to try catnip because we think of how aromatic it is and how smelly and potent it is when you pick it and you smell it. And then when you put it into a tea, it has this really light flavor to it that's actually really nice. Um, it helps reduce fevers, and it also helps improve circulation. So kind of some cool things there with, with catnip that most of us maybe don't think of just because we think of it that it makes our cats crazy. Um, <clears throat> down here, I do have a couple small patches of yarrow. And yarrow, we transplanted this, so it's probably going to be a couple years before we really get blooms. And this, you can see, has, has a really lacy... Um, lacy leaf to it. It's kind of hard to see there. It's not focusing very well. There we go. So you can see it has a very lacy leaf. And um, when the flowers come in bloom, they are going to be white. And you typically get in your wild yarrow, you will get a white leaf or a white petal. And it has been hybridized. So hi is that right? Hi hybridized? Yeah. Um, so you will see yellow and pink and red and a bunch of different colors. <clears throat> and what you can do with yarrow, I always like having yarrow planted. And I'm going to pick a, pick a small piece here. It's pretty, it can be pretty bitter, but I'm going to pick a small piece here. And <clears throat> so say you're out working in the yard and you have the tools out and something happens or you're patching your fence or whatever's going on in your backyard and you happen to get a cut and it doesn't stop bleeding, um, or it's, or it's, you have not whatever, you put a nail, get yourself with a nail. You can actually take a piece of yarrow, and I'm going to chew it up here real quick. And this is actually called a, a, pit, a spit poultice. So I'm adding my own spit to it, essentially, and I'm grinding it with my teeth. And you can actually put it right on an open wound or a cut and it typically stops the bleeding almost instantly. So this is really good to have in the yard. I also, when we go camping or backpacking, because it does grow wild, I kind of check my surroundings and see if there is any available. Just in case, you never know if you need it because it is so good for the skin as well as if there's a, a cut. Um, so I always kind of check my surrounding and see, see what I have available to myself. <clears throat> so that is the fun with yarrow. Do you know if we have any, looking real quick in the yard here to see if we have any plantain. We used I have to, not seen any. We used to have a whole bunch and it's kind of um, been it's elusive. Um, nope, that's mowing. Hmm, yep. That's crazy because we used to have uh, quite a bit of plantain and it's kind of, kind of left our yard sometimes Sometimes herbs will do that. Actually, there's a small piece over here. <clears throat> so this is broadleaf plantain. And this is always really good to have in the yard as well because it is fantastic for, again, just like I did with the yarrow, make a, a spit poultice, put it on a bee sting or a mosquito bite or hives, um, anything like that. It can actually help pull the venom out, um, out of the skin, especially if you're out in the woods 
and you get maybe a, even a fly bite, something that's really potent and it, it stings. Uh, great to have great to have in your surroundings. So again, something else I always look for when we go backpacking or camping, I kind of check my surroundings. I see if we have any dandelion. I see if there's any um, plantain around. Yarrow is always a good one. Just so I know if we need it, I kind of know where maybe a patch of it is. I can go straight to it and grab it, especially in the case of an emergency. Um, all right, so let's head back over this way. So we already looked at the lavender. We already looked at the butterfly weed. So we're going to kind of pass through here and go past those. And down through our front yard here, <clears throat> um, we're going to keep going actually down around the corner. We do have quite a few plants in, in multiple spots. So lemon balm, we're going to look in the back. I have a little bit bigger, bigger spot back there. Um, just couple, touching on a couple things here. This is actually lungwort. Um, again, early, early bloomer. It's already, already bloomed. Those are purple flowers. And over here we have past the aliens here. We have some butter burr. So that actually really likes wet feet. It does really well in the spring and fall. Summertime, it gets a little too warm for it. I have a couple of violets that have snuck in here that just haven't been pulled out, but violets are always really good for um, skin and coat type issues. <clears throat> right behind me here, we have this wonderful sage plant. Sage has, this guy's been around for, oh goodness, what, six or eight years now, Lewis? Mm -hmm. And this is actually, we have two sage plants and they keep coming back every year for us. So you can see right now it's in bloom. And I will say the one thing that we find is that the hummingbirds and the butterflies love it. So we often find them out here. And again, you can see that sage has kind of a textured, a textured leaf to it. It's very aromatic. Most of the time we use it for um, cooking. We often think of sage for <clears throat> Thanksgiving. It's mainly quite often used in culinary. I often suggest sage for ringworm for cats because it does have some antifungal properties to it. So you can take it and use it as a rinse. Um, it should be avoided with animals that have seizures um, just because it's kind of in that family. It has some antibiotic properties to it, so it's often used for sore throats. I will make this into a tea and drink it when my throat hurts or I feel like I'm getting sick. And ours, like I said, it seems to winter over year to year, so that's always fun that we always kind of have it around. I love coming out here in the middle of winter and picking it and still using something fresh in my own cooking to add to what we already were already making. All right, so we're going to travel down the path here a little bit. <clears throat> Um, over here we have a nice patch of meadow sweet that's been growing for a couple years now. And then let's see here. We don't have too much over here. It's kind of wild. Do need to do a little bit of weeding. So this little gem here, this is a uh, stinging nettle. And you can see here that on, on the stems, there are hairs I'm trying to get that in focus there for you. Um, see what we can do here to try and get those hairs in focus maybe move move back a little bit there they are so you can see there there's a bunch of hairs and that's actually whoop do one just touch me that's actually what gives you the sting so within those little hairs is formic acid so hence the name stinging nettle however nettle is actually fantastic for us and it has it's pretty rich in chlorophyll um, it's fantastic for skin disorders. It helps improve circulation. It's known as a nutritive. So most often herbalists will drink this as a tea or we'll pick it and we will make it um, saute it like spinach in the springtime and add it to our, um, maybe our eggs in the morning or a dish at night. Stinging nettle also, some people will, because of the formic acid, will take it and actually tap their wrist or their knee if they're dealing with some tendonitis and that is said to improve circulation in that area and reduce tendonitis um, but you do have to be cautious um, if you if you're not familiar with it because i have seen i have seen nettle actually give people what they call nettle rash it looks it looks very similar to poison ivy you can if somebody is allergic to it you can get kind of a hive reaction um, so, again, once you dehydrate it, you dry it, or you cook it, 
all of that stinging property disappears. It's only when it's in the live plant form that you have all those stinging properties from all those little tiny hairs. So we're gonna squeeze on by this little beauty. <laughs> and we have a couple, couple more plants over here that are pretty cool along the house. So this is Angelica. This is actually on the small side. We've had Angelica's maybe about, what, four years ago that was as tall as our house. So this, this could possibly end up getting another three or four feet on it pretty easily. Um, and it really doesn't bloom. It just kind of gets these, these large ball type flowers. And um, we think it's a fun plant, so. Bugs love it. The bugs love it, yeah. And down over here, this is kind of our pergola fire pit area. We have this patch of cleavers. Unfortunately, it's kind of taken over and probably needs to come out. But cleavers are fantastic for the lymphatic system. And again, they're, um, they get all these like Velcro type hairs on them. So they get really sticky and they stick to your skin. And over here we have a few, you can see they have a very, very tiny flower on them. And they'll even stick to one another. So I'm gonna actually pick a piece here real quick. And if you, um, it'll, it'll, it will um, literally stick to you. It's, it has all these Velcro type, <laughs> um, type hairs on the backside. And you can see it, it forms in a whirl. The leaf, the leaf pattern is a whirl around the stem. It does have a square stem and it does and it will stick to you. Um, so oftentimes you can find them growing in clumps and growing together. You can kind of see, if Lewis you can get around there, you can see them growing up the side of the post there. So these you can actually take and put into a juicer. Um, some people will make a juice, put it in like a juicer that you make wheatgrass juice from. Take, extract the, the juice from it and drink it. Um, it does need to be just like wheatgrass consumed pretty quickly to keep all the properties. We have here in our wheelbarrow, this is needs to find a home still, but we do have some oregano. Again, another aromatic plant, a lot of people cook with it. Does get small pink, pinkish, pinkish purple flowers on it, but that'll be, this is lovely. It comes back year after year and again, um, can come out and pick it just about year round. So back over here we have quite a few plants and I'll go through some other things that we have. We have a small little pond area over here. So again, you can see we do have some other large chunks of comfrey back through here. Um, this is down here, we have some peppermint growing. So peppermint, you can tell, is a little bit different than spearmint. When we look at spearmint, peppermint has this nice red stem to it. And again, it's very aromatic, so when you pick it, um, you can you can smell the peppermint coming from it. Uh, we do have a small patch of hyssop, just kind of hiding over here still. So hyssop gets these really pretty purple flowers, but this guy here, this is hyssop. Um, hyssop is known to keep away some of the pests and rodents. Unfortunately, my patch has gotten smaller and smaller every year. Um, this big guy here, which Unfortunately, we have a couple of them that just probably need to come out. So this is actually burdock. So I'm sure all of our dog lovers are very familiar with burdock. You go out and you go out in the field and run around with your dog and they come in and they have a bunch of burrs stuck to them or you actually get a bunch of burrs stuck to you. This is a plant that they actually come from. So the first year is pretty much looks like this. It's a rosette of leaves. And then the second year, is when you get the stalk and you get all the burrs on it. And the job of that is to get stuck to you and then travel on so it can be replanted, um, reseeded to another area so it can prosper and continue to grow. Burdock is great for the liver. It's a mild liver cleanser. Um, right here behind me, this is a Jerusalem artichoke. And most often, this actually gets really tall and it gets kind of some small sunflower type flowers on it. And you can grow, oh, Lewis plucked us a little tuber. So you actually can eat the tubers. Some people will eat them in replace of potatoes. So if you pick enough of them, you can actually clean these and make almost like a mashed potato out of them. I've also eaten them sliced and then 
uh, soaked with apple cider vinegar. They're almost marinated. So these are actually very prolific as well. And they keep, keep growing nonstop um, every year. We actually ended up putting ours in a grow bag because they will take over. <laughs> so we wanted to, to try and, we want them in the yard, but we don't want them to take over the yard. So we've tried, tried to be creative with that. And let's see here, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try and be creative and get back around that corner there. So actually, maybe if you can just pan over there, Lewis. So we have a little bit more sage. You can see, you can see the purple flowers there. So we have a whole patch of sage there. And then next to that, those tall, spiky green things, that's actually yellow dock. So yellow dock, again, good for the liver. Most of your dock plants are, has a really bright yellow root to it. Um, grows kind of like a carrot, so it goes grows straight down and deep. And then there's, we need to do a little bit more uh, clearing out here, but we do have the white flowers back there, which are valerian. So valerian we often know of as something that is a nervine herb and helpful for calming the nervous system. And valerian is really interesting in that the flowers actually are really showy and they're pretty and they actually have a really good aroma to them. And then you, you dig up this like mangled mess of a root ball um, and it's really stinky. It smells like dirty socks. That's probably the most common, common words used to, to describe valerian is it smells like dirty socks. So it's really interesting how something up top is very showy and air, um, aromatic and, and below is very ar aromatic as well. It's just in a different way. All right, so we're gonna back up, go back around the pond here. We have some more marshmallow. We have a bunch of chives. Uh, we have some Indian rattles growing here. Um, oh, you know what we kind of skipped over out front was Salomon seal, but we do have some Salomon seal growing. Um, we have a couple plants. We have Queen of the Meadow in the little swamp there. These are bee balm. These are kind of, um, they, they smell a little bit like oregano. Again, they have a square stalk. So if you look at that stem there, that stem is very square in nature. And these get, um, the wild bee balm actually get purple flowers on them. We have a really nice lemon balm bush here. So lemon balm, if you look at it, looks very much like catnip, except when you pick it and you smell it, <clears throat> It smells very lemony. It smells um, citronella-ish. So you can definitely sometimes even tell a big difference just by smelling the plant. Um, if, if you're not too sure what it is or if it looks like something maybe, like I said, catnip and this look very similar. One quick plant down here that I wanna show you is our spearmint. So again, back to the mint family. We have a good square stock, but look how fuzzy these are. Super fuzzy stalk, super fuzzy leaf. And these, again, mint family, so lemon balm, catnip, spearmint, peppermint. Um, you can really smell the difference. This one smells very, um, very minty, but on the spearmint edge of it, not peppermint. A little bit different fragrance to it. They've kind of grown in here, so we need to weed those out. But if, anyone, if anyone's interested in any spearmint, let me know. We'll dig some up for you. And then we're going to end over here with some motherwort. Motherwort totally ended up in our yard. Um, again, just like marshmallow without us planting it. <laughs> and we must have something for the mint family because look at this. We have another square, um, square stalk. So these leaves here, this is motherwort. We also have a nice motherwort back against the fence there. This is kind of the area of where our compost pile was. So I think at one point, <laughs> motherwort probably ended up in the compost pile. And then, um, oh, look at that, my book got wet. Ended up in the compost pile and then uh, started growing again. So if you're interested in herbs, one of my favorite books, I wanted to pull this aside. Sorry, it's a little wet because I made a little bit of rain. Look at this, there's slugs already on it, Lewis. Yeah, the <laughs> <covered in> <laughs> wow. A um, bunch of slugs in my book. This is Today's Herbal Health by Louise um, Tenney, T-E-N-N-E-Y. This is actually probably one of my, 
my more favorite books that I use for herbs. Um, has a lot of the constitutions in it. Has um, some definitions. So what does carminative mean? What does, uh, what is nutritive? What is um, vermifuge? So this is a really nice book. She goes through and gives you actions, primary, primary applications, secondary applications, um, parts used, properties, primary nutrients. So just a really good book. She also goes through ailments and kind of what helps with that. Just kind of a, a go-to book that I've always had around the shop. So I hope you guys have enjoyed our tour of our backyard. We have a lot of stuff growing, but I, it's always comforting to me to know that if we're in a bind or we need something, we actually might have our own medicine in our backyard. So if you have any questions, um, stop into the store. We could probably answer them for you. And hopefully you'll be watching. We have an upcoming video coming up. We're gonna use some of the herbs in the backyard and make a skin healing salve. So hopefully you guys will catch that video as well. Hope everyone had a fantastic weekend and we're gonna be back at the store tomorrow at 10 a.m. and we'll see you then. Have a great night.